Okay, last we left Half-Life 2, Episode 2, we were in the car. We were on our way. Just made it through a combine checkpoint. Killed everybody there. Uh, there was a cache that I was trying to get at the very end of the last episode that I might spend a couple minutes on here. I'm not too stressed about it right now. Remote play together? Is there two-player in Half-Life 2? I think we want this one. Oh no. My uh, gaming PC keyboard has been sitting on top of the computer for a while, and the corner of it is just so slightly warped so it doesn't sit flush with the desk anymore. So I tap a button, it does that. Here we go. It's one of those cheap Amazon keyboards. I can probably replace it for 15 bucks or something. I try knocking this thing down again. I think uh, Valve is trying to like push mods though. A little remote play pop up I got there. That was kind of weird. I have a shitty Amazon keyboard for the gaming PC. I've got two separate ones for the streaming game PC. Okay, that definitely does work. I was worried before because I couldn't quite get it to work. The bottom left corner of it is slightly warped, so when I type a key. Probably doesn't sound any different than just the sound of tapping a key, but the actual corner of the board is also making contact with the desk. Let's go, muscle car! I'm actually not sure which way to go, so I'll just drive and see if it makes sense. Be local multiplayer people want, I see. Oh, cool, Brewski. No worries, it's this thing is like $11 on Amazon or something. I shouldn't leave it up there anyway because Ben goes and gargoyles to try to get me to feed him. That doesn't sound good. Hey, this is the right way. Look at that. I think that's White Forest. Oh, cool. Well, we're close enough to make it the rest of the way on foot if we have to. I've got a mechanical keyboard for the stream PC. So probably, well, let's see. Guessing they don't want me going this way. I figured I'd check. I've got one of those unnecessary RGB lights, Razer Chroma keyboards for the stream PC. That's cool. Sentries are doing their job. What the hell? Really? Oh, nice. I like how they draw your attention to look up at Dog there. Oh, no. Not Dog, no! Get him, dog. Got this, buddy. I love little scenes like this. Episode 2 really feels like it's Half-Life 2 at its best. 
Which makes sense. Dog. No, dog. dog! Are you alright? Wake up, dog. Oh. Projected this when we first met, dog. Hey! Didn't you know RGB makes your computer go faster? We're fine. Dog, okay. Better now. We've been waiting for you. Just follow the stream, then head up the other side. White Forest is right there. You can't miss it. All right. Thanks. Sweet. Okay, let's go. With us. Come on, Gordon. Get the car and we'll not to a race. Oh, thanks, Doug. Good Really, I need a numpad. I'd use it so much in my day to day workflow. Looks like we need your help again. Would you mind? Thanks, dog. This game is so good. I've said this in like every episode of Half Life 2 so far, but like, I love how you're just kind of thrown into this setting. Just like Gordon. Way to go, boy. Okay, dog. Race you to the base. <laughs> Step on it, Gordon. Gordon Freeman is the most along for the ride protagonist of all time. I guess maybe Vaughn from Final Fantasy XII competes. I'm um, probably racing dog so I can see where he goes so I can follow him, right? Oh my god, you... You do math using the number line? Brewski. Yeah, suboptimal spreadsheeting indeed. I thought we were friends. Hey, sneakers, how you doing? What's up? Let me get a bigger task. Hey man, you wanna let me through, or am I just supposed to drive through your gate? I feel like that would be rude of me. You definitely have a thing that seems to be built to prevent the car from doing that. Oh, okay, it wanted me to stop the car there. Got it. Let us in. Yo, let him through. Thanks. We had a feeling you were close when we saw you. Doing all right, sneakers. Get your uh, West of Loading DLC sublock should be next week, I think. We made it. We did. Yo. I could see a detachable numpad being nice. Alex, mutual fiend. You made it. Hey. Boy, are we glad to be here. Yeah, we heard you ran into a little trouble out there. The Combine's been trying to hit in the front door. <laughs> I think they learned their lesson. You mind if we uh, keep dog patrolling out here? <laughs> Not at all. Go for it. You heard him, dog. I'm gonna go see Dad. I'll catch up to you later. Take care of yourself. I don't think Eli knows you're here yet. He's in Silo 1 access unit, right through here. Shall we? What now? Is oh it... no, what's that? Well, now what? Alright, back to work, everyone. It's just another false alarm in the 
Sure it is. So, you ever used an AR2 before? AR2? No. Now an AR3, sure. Plenty of times. There is no such thing as an AR3. Well, see, in the city, the place was loud with AR2. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it was. Shit's about to get real because the pacing has suddenly slowed down and come all friendly. Hey, Gordon, man, you made it. Dad, Alex. I was so afraid I wouldn't see you again. There, there, sweetheart. We're together now. That's all that matters. And look at you, son. <laughs> I knew if you both stayed together, you could get through anything. Yeah? We make a pretty good team. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good because, well... Now that the suppression feels down, we all have to do our part. Dad! Can you blame an old man for wanting grandkids? <laughs> <laughs> What's the right, the suppression field. Dad, it's not what it looks like. I'm fine. Are you sure? Shouldn't we have that looked at? Got you resurrected. Uh, where's Dr. Kleiner? Cave goop juice. Shouted him right away. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, we should. You'll be glad for a chance to get out of the silo. This way, Gordon. The way he and Magnuson have been Valve doesn't do threes. They were still competing for grant money. <laughs> <laughs> Some things never change. <laughs> do we have any idea how long until the super portal's active? We don't know for certain. We're keeping an eye on it. And what about the combine? Will we be able to launch before they attack? It's going to be close. All it would take is one strider to destroy our rocket. But we're ready for it. I'm sorry we couldn't get here any sooner, Dad. Don't worry, sweetheart. We're gonna make it. I'm just so glad. Some great dread building here. I'm glad to be back. A relief, not to mention a delight to see you here at last. And Gordon, I see you in the HEV suit have taken excellent care of each other. <laughs> They're inseparable. The That's data, true. People, that data. Kleiner, are you going to sync up the satellite or should I postpone the launch to make time for a family reunion? Oh, really? All right, all right. <coughs> I was just saying hello to Alex and Gordon. Oh, fine. No one grants me a moment's peace, but by all means, unroll the red carpet. Good grief. I only meant they might. Oh, I'm sure this isn't a go fabulously. Now, my dear, where is this data packet you've been carrying? If I delay a single moment, I'll never hear the end of it. You have my word on it. It's right here, Dr. Kleiner. We've got a ton of data. The strange thing is, it was all attached to a transmission from Judith. Transmission? From Judith? Do you mean the message didn't get through? We've got to see this hmm. right away. Just let me start the decoding process, and then we can view it in the auxiliary control room. For God's sake, hurry. Yes, yes, of course. Another alarm? Mm. What next? A parade of constant interruptions. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Anyone? <sighs> Folks, alarms all day. Damn crows have been nesting in the tracks. I I'm sure this one's false. How I am supposed to concentrate with all of this racket. Freeman, Freeman, you're not doing anything. Make yourself useful and find out what the hell is going on in there. Uh, yes. Gordon, if you don't mind, I'd feel better if you had a look. Catch sure. up with us when you're done. Okay. Freeman. The blast doors will have sealed due to the alert, so you'll have to go through the bottom of the launch tube. I'll open this hatch to let you down. Thank you. Once you're down there, have Uriah let you into the secondary silo. Yes, I am excited to play Half-Life Alex. I'm hoping that it is the killer app that VR desperately needs. Beat Saber is cool, dude. Uh, 
it itself. Hopefully Valve has figured out the way to do VR and make something that has to be in VR. So just about everything other than Beat Saber is, oh, this is a normal game, but in VR. Yeah, but even Elite Dangerous was developed before Attention VR came out, right? This is Dr. Magnuson. Since the secondary silo staff seem incapable of solving their... Job Simulator is kind of a... You will be happy to hear we have put the... Tech demo, right? Freeman on the job. We all look forward to his remedy. And I look forward to hearing the staff's excuses for why they couldn't handle it themselves. Thank you for your patience. Oh. Wait, I guess that's not what I thought it was. I thought that was one of the liquor things on the ceiling. Okay, never mind. What's up, buddy? Yeah, play Roy. Go back to the carpet store. I think that just reflects poorly on the offerings of VR. Further unauthorized use of the emergency order to be dealt with. Oh, hey, he's got a little well met. lap coat. That's cool. What's going on down here, bud? Raymond, the it's me. instructed me to admit you into the secondary silo. The secondary silo can be reached through here. Cool. I like the build in this sequence. I think the problem is like so Elite Dangerous sells just fine to the community that doesn't have VR hardware, right? And Beat Saber is a small enough indie game that it doesn't really need a ton of money invested in it. So I'm hoping that, you know, Valve is willing to take a loss knowing that you can only play Alex on a VR headset. It's a potentially expensive game to develop. Basically every dev's gonna be in a situation where it's like, well, we can't sell this if it's VR only. Because there's not a big enough install base for it. Whoa, that, that was surprising. Jesus. God. Jesus, that was cool. It's like I get here, and there's a problem. Nothing can be peaceful. This is something that Nintendo has done for a really long time. Okay, I thought I could put it in here. Nintendo has had the killer app for their console. It's like, oh, I'm gonna buy a Switch because I want to play Breath of the Wild. I'm gonna buy a Wii because I want to play Skyward Sword. Gordon's not a peaceful guy. So it's not to say that Elite Dangerous is bad, because it's certainly a good game, just that it's sad that there aren't any, like, native VR games. time of this recording, Half-Life Alex is not out yet. It is something I'm going to want to check out pretty early. 
once it comes available. This is a cool sequence. I really liked all the combat levels in this... in both Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Episode 2. A lot of cool non-degenerate level design. Not just fighting the same group of combine over and over. Get Alex Arms. I think it was also very savvy of them to not make it Half Life 3, to make it an integral. I could explore this setting more without, like, trying to live up to everyone's expectations for Half-Life 3. Excuse me. Just keep doing Xeno's Paradox intercools. <laughs> Make a million Half-Life games set between the events of 1 and 2. If you got time travel in this setting, you can do whatever you want. Just don't ever call it Half-Life 3. Yeah, I wasn't actually clear in the, uh... I haven't seen the trailer in a long time. Does Alex talk in it? Or are they gonna do the the player character doesn't talk trope. Nice. Oh shit. as always, too. Hello, friend. I very badly need another exploding barrel thing. Not an exploding barrel, it's just a regular barrel. I guess they're not as buff as I thought they were. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a little bit of joking in-universe about Gordon not talking much, but it's part of that, like, suspension of ludonarrative dissonance thing that, like, I think we're meant to understand that, like, Gordon Freeman actually talks, like, in the actual narrative outside of the game. He wouldn't have a physics degree if he didn't. But from our perspective as the player, he doesn't, because we're supposed to project on him. Freeman, I repeat, there has been a breach of the secondary silo by way of the overhead launch doors. I will trust overhead. you to seal the silo doors. <laughs> So I don't know how much of this game is calculated to draw the player where they're supposed to go, but that's such a great way to have dialogue that draws you to the ladder 
It doesn't say go climb up the ladder, right? It's like, right, overhead. Okay, what effects? How you doing? I'm about to die. Not good. Chelk and talk, yeah. It's still one of my favorite comedic sequences in all of video games where Wheatley's talking to you. And it's like, press A to talk, and you jump. That's, uh, that's jumping. What you're doing there is jumping. Steven Merchant, great. Right? It's pretty great. Very good jumper. I guess, word of God or not, in Portal, it's you could argue that you know, in the setting, maybe Chell can't talk. Maybe she's been raised in the testing facility. Working on it. Eric Wolpaw, I think, is the writer for Portal. I went to a really great PAX panel that he gave. One of those panels that'll stick with me was him and Tim Schafer talking about writing in video games. Remember, the panel itself was great, but the Q&A was awful because it was like right around the time Minecraft was released. So everyone was asking like, how can you write games in a world of nonlinear storytelling where everyone makes their own stories? And Eric's like, I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to write a nonlinear story. It was kind of the same hysteria we were getting with mobile games, where they were like, you know... Minecraft is the end of traditional storytelling in video games. It's like how they're never going to make a normal video game again. It's all going to be mobile games. It's like, no, that's not going to happen. Nice big green button. Single player games are dead. Nope, oh, those are my friends. Sorry, guys. I am pleased to announce the secondary silo has been sealed. Well, back to work. <laughs> back to work. Oh, wow, that's crazy, six -hun. Gordon, thank goodness you're okay. Glad that's over. We couldn't get in until you sealed off the silo when the blast doors opened up. Regrettably true. I better let my dad know you're all right. Dad? He's fine. And thanks to him, the base is secure. Good, good. We're about to watch the transmission from Judas. We'll head right over. I don't want a chest hand, too. Freeman must follow. Yes, forward. And I have this frustration with, like, industry types that are trying to predict trends. I can return to my place of honor. I love, I love them so much. Dr. Kleiner told me to head north in a helicopter right after they got here, but he wouldn't tell me why. My vertebra earlier survived too, which was shocking to me. So like, the the the, the industry execs who are like, oh, Game of Thrones is popular. People must like fantasy. Fantasy's in, and it's like, no. It's not that fantasy's in, it's that Game of Thrones is good. <laughs> oh, this movie sold well, so we should do more movies like it. Like, no, that you're not getting it. Was good, I should say, in the case of Game of Thrones.
And same with like the Marvel movies. Superhero movies are in. It's like, no. Good movies are in. Wait a moment. There's something else here. Yeah, but loot effects, I think the problem is that the, the conventional industry wisdom that fantasy was not sellable was never based on reality in the first place. It was based on the same kind of crap. Heist movies are in, not fantasy. Lord of the Rings comes out and blows away box office records and award records. Oh, wow. So had Portal already been announced at this point? I've never played Half-Life 2, so I didn't know Aperture Science was ever mentioned in this. Vanished with all hands, and even part of the dry dock. Few believed the Borealis would ever be seen again. It should have been lost forever. Ah, but now that we've found it, we can use it against the combat. Loose with portal. Mm. So episode one had come out before this one? Humanity. We can't simply waste all that potential. Black Mesa taught you anything? There's no controlling that kind of power. Well, yes, there's always a risk, Eli. But my goodness, we have coordinates, blueprints, hailing frequencies. Quite ingenious of Dr. Mossman to hide it all in the carrier way. Well, that means she's still alive up there. But if the Combine catches, it'll tear out everything she knows. There'll be nothing left of her. But we don't know for sure I won't that... take that chance. I'm going after Dad. Now, Eli, the only thing worse than Judith falling into their hands would be if they should get a hold of you. She may know the particulars of the Borealis, but you, you know everything about the Resistance. Listen to Dr. Kleiner, Dad. Gordon and I are more than able to handle this. We'll get her back. Kleiner, where are you? Why isn't the decoding finished? Oh, fine. The code. Yes, Magnuson? It just needs a little bit longer. You're waiting for the Combines. Go ahead. They'll soon be here to give it to you in a No, the Aperture Science logos. It's cool. I'll be back as soon as I finish. I knew that Portal vaguely took place in the Half-Life universe. I mean, there's like the maybe back Black Mesa line in the song, but I didn't realize they were actually connected to Half-Life's story. Dad, prepare for unforeseen consequences. What did you say? Dad! Okay. It's okay. Just, just lean into me. Uh, let's get you off your feet. Thank you, baby. I'll be fine in a minute or two. Okay. Do you need anything? Actually, Alex, would you... Would you mind getting me a cup of tea? There's a hot plate in the old staff room. I'll be right back. Gordon, just keep an eye on him. Sure. We're not going anywhere. Thank you. on the couch with him. You can hop on him. Unforeseen consequences. The last Picture him, like, sitting right on the edge of the couch, crouching. Let's wrap. You had just stepped into the test chamber when he whispered them in my ear. Mm. You know who I'm talking about. The G-Man. We need more resolution here. When he brought in that crystal, I knew I, I should have aborted that damn test, but... I Interesting. The whole world went to hell that day. And now, now he's using my little girl, putting words in her mouth. That's a pretty big revelation. Damn it. I should have known when he rescued her, it was for his own damn reasons. Gordon, there's so much I need to tell you. Uh -oh. Between us, we may finally have a chance. Um, Here you go. Okay. Is everything all right? There's nothing, honey. All Everything's right, fine. Change of plans. There is no way we can launch before those striders are. Oh, oh, excuse me if I'm interrupting tea time. I'll just step out until you've finished, if that's more convenient. It's all right. Well, Freeman, I believe I've found the perfect use for you. Follow me, quickly. We'll, uh, we'll talk later. I'll catch up later. A bit. I'm enjoying every segment of episodes one and two. Freeman, Striders are coming. A single one of those damn 
things could shoot down our rocket. I think the base campaign of Half-Life 2 is more important than it is good, but I think Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and 2 are like, they have aged perfectly. And the staff seem to respect you. Therefore, I'm putting Defense of White Forest and this ingenious new weapon of mine in your hands. That's great. Call it the Magnuson device. Not my chosen label, you understand, but I'm sure to please the personnel. <laughs> now look lively in there. Do not now erase. The delivery port. Now what it is, is a sort of sticky bomb, although cleverer than that makes it sound. From your point of view, you merely pitch the device at the Strider's hull, then blow it up. I've struggled with a mechanism for launching the device, but... Well, your zero-point energy field manipulator clears up that little problem. Now follow me, and we'll let you get in some practice while we still have time. Don't be alarmed, Freeman. This Strider's days of impaling your friends are a thing of the past. Oh, hey. Now, out in the field, we'll supply you with all the Magnuson devices you need through delivery ports like this one. Okay. For the safety of the base. These devices are deactivated. They cannot explode like those you will find in the field. That's right. Now toss it at the main body of the Strider. Good. Now take out the firearm of your choice and shoot the device. There you go. Ah, not too difficult at this range, is it? Gets a bit harder when it's moving about and firing at you, of course. Now let's move on to a more challenging task. Uriah, send the target to the far end of the room. Not that Magnuson. This is great. I love this stuff. Very well. Try it now. Okay, so I can just literally aim it. Challenging at this range, isn't it? I don't think I have to worry about projectile drop off too much, basically. As you can see, the Magnusons are fragile. They will disintegrate immediately if they miss their target. A little bit of drop off. Magnificent device, isn't it? It is. I'll be right over here when you are ready to head up. This one's mostly opens with being in the caves, getting the things to heal Alex. Now every building in the valley has its with your Vortigaunt bro. So you'll have ample supply of explosives. Now I must get magnificent device. <laughs> I'm relying on you not to squander my trust or my magnificence. Oh, and Freeman, if you pull this off, I might just forgive you for that debacle at Black Mesa. You know the one I mean, involving a certain microwave casserole. <laughs> okay. I love how they're able to do this weird thing where it's like, they clarify stuff to you in the story that should be just obvious to Freeman because he remembers his life but that are mysteries to the player because of the way that they handled the transition from Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2. That, like the rando side NPCs, there's like a million scientists and a million guards. They're like, well, this guy's one of the scientists. You never actually met him in Half-Life 2, but take our word for it. The, the microwave casserole incident. I think the public interest ebbing and flowing in specific genres, even that is pretty constructed. I think it's like, the reason we even have the phrase superhero fatigue is because a bad movie like Man of Steel or Batman vs. Superman comes out and nobody goes to see it and we swam, we like scramble to figure out why nobody went to see it and we say, oh, it's because superhero fatigue and then Avengers Endgame is the best selling movie of all time, right? Like. I believe that it's probably true for individuals, but I think people just like good movies and good video games. That's helpful. Thanks, man. I tweaked your onboard radar so the combines show up red on the dashboard unit now. 
permanent bad movie send fatigue. Send a signal to your HEV suit in case you get separated from your car. That's convenient no too. To thank me. Now check this map. We're right here at the south end of the valley. The rest of the gangs up north by the old sawmill here. Got it. Down up there, and they'll fill you in on the battle plan. Sounds good. I'll be staying here to watch the field and send status updates. Good luck out there. Oh, that sounds cool. I do like Adam Rude's everything. The modern Adam Sandler movies are mostly embarrassing cash grabs. Andrew actually watched one that popped up on Netflix. It's like, wow, this is literally just Perimeter paying for him clear. and his friends to have a vacation, isn't it? Of incursion. Keep alert. It's like sawmill -y. The sawmill is that way. They're expecting you. Oh, thanks. I really like what they've done in the, with the muscle car in this game, too. You can see all the Magnuson devices everywhere on its little radar. That's neat as well. Sorry, Come doctor. closer. Dr. Freeman. So, so, they've sent Freeman, have they? Good man. We've counted a dozen striders just north of us. Our job is to keep them from reaching the base to the south. If they get close enough for one good shot at the silo, the whole launch is a bust. And in case striders aren't bad enough, recon indicates they're being escorted by packs of hunters. Now, what I want you to do... Attention! Uh -oh. North mm. perimeter breach. Hey, we have a strider approaching from the crane. Oh, Defensive position, go! Oh boy, here we go. Everyone ready? We need to stop him here. Remember, keep him distracted while Freeman takes him down. Yeah, gonna be bad. Whoa, we can blow up my thing that I'm holding. Okay, got it. Team Fortress 2. I played a decent amount of it back in the day. Nice. Even though shooters aren't usually my jam. That seems bad. Shots coming from. Oh, they blew up one of my makers. Interesting. I'm gonna die in a second. I know there's more I can get. This is what I mean though about really liking how much this game has non-degenerate action sequences. There's always some kind of unique objective that you're having to fulfill. It's not just another million rooms full of, uh, combine. I don't- I thought there was a Magnus in here. I guess not. 
zombie already got destroyed. That's annoying. Get bounced off his head. sound effects. I think I shot it in just the worst possible place, so I'll go ahead and die here and then we'll do it again. Here we go. Keep an eye out. It looks like hunters are traveling with the striders. They're working in packs. Gotcha. I'm coming. Or can I set this thing down without it blowing up? Yeah, okay. The traveling pass. The hunters, you mean? I do really like the little tutorial sequence before you come out here, too. No kidding. Very nice. First I thought the thing generated them, but it's kind of cool that you have to like manually pick them up and put them on the back of the car. This way, maybe. Here they go. Challenge of this section too. So far, it's pretty well balanced. Keep up the good work. Only a few striders left. 
It's a great way to build on, like, this is one of the first enemies you see in Half-Life 2 is a Strider walking around, right? Before you can do anything about it. Another Strider coming in towards what used to be the sawmill. What used to be the sawmill. I wonder if that changes, if, if like the sawmill's guaranteed to be destroyed. Cargo. Perfecto. Got to go get another one. So, Brewski, I think there's a good chance we might beat this on your next sub-block, so if you have another game to switch to, let me know. I don't think Half-Life Alex will be out by then, but... Max Payne would be great. That was an awesome game. Yeah, we haven't done too many bullet time games. I think I've been stuck for too long in this game. I haven't like had to repeat any sections at length to my recollection. The destructible buildings are pretty sweet, I gotta say. Episode 1 and Episode 2, it's been really clear what to do. I don't think I've gotten stuck for longer than a few minutes. Whoops, that was a waste. Would have been nice for those hunters. Yeah, flat episodic games. There were even games that weren't episodic that were like structured that way, like Resident Evil Revelations. Like on the last episode, like, what are you talking about? This is all one game. Let me uh, save really quick just because I have sudden paranoia. Square Enix are still doing episodic titles. Yeah, did it work for Telltale though? Exactly.
Okay, we got that rushing strider. Killed its guard. Thanks, game, for giving that to me. For a second, I thought you weren't going to. Oh, they destroyed the loot. It's a dropship. The base, people. Don't let him near the base. I've definitely had a, a binging thing too, where it's like I have no interest in playing a game and then waiting a few weeks before playing it again. Like I just want to wait for all the episodes to come out. I wonder what percentage of players do that. Now there's one at the sawmill. So many striders. What's the difference between a sequel and another episode? Probably depends on the game. The episode sequels to Half-Life 2 are pretty comparable in length to Half-Life 2 itself. I mean, they're like maybe like half the length or slightly higher than half the length. Strange does feel like it's trying to be episodes of a TV show. I feel that that works. when they cry. Yeah, it's an awesome game, it's my thing. Or visual novels, okay. out of time, but I'm going to try to finish up this these last couple striders here. Just track it to Brewski's time. Strider. 
Whoa, I guess I got stepped on? Holy shit. I think I saved fairly recently. Oh wow, that can't be right. Maybe it was. All right, well, that's that'll be our stopping point then. Future Mars said, you gotta go to the blue areas on the radar, get one of the uh, Magnuson balls with the gravity gun, put it in the back of the car, take it to a Strider, shoot it on the Strider's body after killing its two hunter guards, blow it up by shooting at it and repeat until all the Striders are dead. You'll probably beat the game next episode, so make sure you've got Max Payne ready to switch to.